the small South Louisiana town I grew up in was very uh, uh, small. It, it didn't have the trappings of the, a big cosmopolitan city like, like Washington. It did have a great family and friends and fun and food. Louisiana food can't be beat. I, I had a vivid imagination and I played cops and robbers long after my friends had moved on to football and baseball. I started in theater when I was 12 years old in the community theater in my hometown and I really loved it. It was a lot of fun. It, it, the bug really bit me and when I was a teenager I had the opportunity to go to work as a disc jockey at my small town's one radio station. And then after college, I went into television and hopscotched around the country doing local news. And I was a weatherman and a talk show host until I ended up here in Washington and wasn't having fun doing that anymore. And uh, I decided to switch over to the what, what had always been my first love. I just didn't realize it, which was the theater. This was in the early 80s, and Washington was just beginning to bubble up as a uh, a really good spot for professional theater and I was lucky I joined in and as the theaters grew so did I. I was so fortunate I had great roles in great plays throughout my 35 years on stage and I got to play some real iconic characters. I got to play Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof, Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman, and my swan song was Lear in, in King Lear. So for me, I think where I ended up after my work career was kind of where I started as a kid. I'm not sure that it's, it's always that way. Well, Mozart maybe, but I'm no Mozart. I had a lot of growing up to do, no matter what uh, field I would, I would have gone into. When I was in my 30s, I suffered a deep depression, some of which had to do with the theater, and I wasn't handling criticism very well. And during that time, I took, I took off from the theater. I quit for four years with no intention of going back. But after I started to feel better, then I, I waded back, back into it. And when I went back in after that four-year hiatus, I, I told myself I was not going to let it matter so much. It was not going to be so important to me that it would, that it would upset me. That, that there's such great joy to be had in what I did in my work. It was hard, but it was doable because my wife and I had a good partnership. She had a, a really important job and she worked days and I worked nights. I would say to someone who's considering a career in the arts, you have to be committed to it, and you have to be willing to have your heart broken again and again. But the good stuff outweighs the bad stuff. It's been three years now that I've, that I've been in the village, and you know, as I got to know people more and, and know what was available to us, I found other people who were interested in theater who wanted to do a play reading group. I said, sure, count me in. Uh, I had wanted to do a little writing myself. I found some people who were interested in writing. I said, sure, let's go, let's do it. It's very open, welcoming, no kind of pressure, no kind of judgment. Uh, it's, it's a really great organization. But I think the theater has changed because of the way the world has changed. The, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, the uh, challenges that uh, the pandemic uh, presented to us made us as a society look at what we were doing. And, and the theater is responding to that. The theater is, is uh, responding to that, not only in the material it chooses to present to an audience, but in the way that it produces itself. Spaceship Earth's in danger. Find out what needs to be done. Reform the environment, not man. That is the design responsibility. The theater, because it's so collaborative, holds a mirror up to the audience, unlike any other art, even more than the movies 
and television. For some reason, it's that element of the audience sitting in the space where the art is taking place that makes the difference. The show was really a thought-provoking experience. I just really enjoyed it. Rick Fouché rocks. <laughs> this show is fantastic. In as much as all art is supposed to hold up a mirror to us so that we can see ourselves in it, the theater seems to be the most celebratory to me. It's hard now, but I think we're on the precipice of entering into a world that is more uh, personally understanding, uh, socially aware, and uh, hopefully more full of love. <laughs>